All right. We're back up. Bitrate heavily degraded for the Twitch fools. Said lovingly. A lot of chatting about the pipes. All right. That could go uh, one of one ways. And we're back. All right. Everybody, tell me if this if this stream is good for you. I crank down the bitrate. Uh, crank down the quality of commentary. It's going to be a real mixed bag. Much smoother. All right. Yeah. I thought I thought I was being pro gamer by being 4K 60 FPS. But uh, apparently Apparently this is not the, the 3090 crowd. I haven't buffered yet. All right, that's what I like to hear. Okay, three, two, one, go. All right, gonna make a new game. Yeah, welcome. That said, anything could happen. This may be the least stable build we've ever streamed. Also, I don't know if you guys can see it, but Steam is still down. In theory, we're broadcasting to both. All right, this is Reyna. This is the worst day of Reyna's life. This is how you move, Reyna. You can move left, or you can use move right. She's got lots of questions, mostly getting bad news. And like I said, Rain is in trouble here. Guard's trying to intimidate her. Don't you worry about him, though. Actually, our first problem in the game is that we have to worry about him. I'm, uh... Oh, weird. That should be off. Well, we'll have tutorials on then. It always bugged me in video games where like Mario like doesn't get the entirety of his foot above a ledge and so falls to his death. I guess they don't do that in 3D Mario games, but still. Anyway, Rainer can grab. She just needs to get her hips above it. All right, in we go. Got a drink from the fountain directly because it's not portable. That might be relevant. Gonna get to know Reyna for a little bit. Not the most compliant person ever. Little shades in 1984. I don't want to get like too much into the backstory of the game, right? Because, you know, you could go like full Dune and like give some insight. And even they stayed, like Herbert stayed really general actually about like how all these things work. But like it's a character centric story. We won't get to see a ton of it in the demo because it's just the demo. But we have sort of a dystopian background. Just got a mundane labor job. Not inspiring. A little smirk. Knows she's upsetting him. And now Reyna is in trouble. There we go. We now find out. So Jericho, the game's Reyna and Jericho. This is Reyna. Jericho has gotten himself into some sort of trouble, attempting to kill someone. <laughs> Reyna does not know what's going on. Doesn't doesn't know even how she, or where she ended up. And a big part of the game. Like a Metroidvania where you're going around back to previous areas and collecting old things. 
Well, the story in the game is on a similar thread, I'm trying to figure out what happened. We play a lot with cause and effect. Guy's just ranting to himself. Alright, this is your chance, Reyna. Oh, little typo if you caught it. GTFO! All right, welcome to the game. We have, we have a key card. Rana is physically smaller than everyone else in the game. She is weaker than everyone else in the game. She is less informed than everyone else in the game. But she has a key card and she's scrappy and resourceful and squirmy. So let's see what we can do with that. Can you do the bionic command of clip through the elevator? <laughs> uh, that thought has never occurred to me. Yep, she also doesn't know the layout of this place. We're working on that, though. That's right. You gave her, you scared her too much. She's got nothing, nothing to be afraid of. Also, you guys let me know how the volume levels are, okay? So, this style of tutorial, they used to all be like this text that fades in at the bottom and is really, um, really subtle. And, you know, it didn't disrupt the game because I wanted to keep it flowing, right? Um, but... There was one tester who like did not absorb any information from it at all and was like how do i do this how do i do this ps4 inputs you didn't have those um so the game will detect whatever controller you're using and change the iconography based on it but sometimes steam uh almost always steam likes to show xbox mapping over ps4 and i think that actually is like a windows thing i think there's an emulation layer or something going through there but yeah it's if I were to use keyboard, it would show keyboard, and it would switch, like, right now. Anyway. Dang it! <laughs> and when he arrives... Alright, we got two typos. Maybe you guys didn't see it. Wound he arrives. Again, oh, it's tough because like when uh, I'm trying to like I'm getting feedback from people so fast and like I have things I wanted to get done. There's always things that you want to get done that you don't to uh, you know have it in a demo or whatever. And we can go left first. And that. It's just a dead end for now. There's also a bug in this room, but I don't want to show it to you. I could say that about most rooms in the game, though. Okay, let's go left. Or, let's go right, pardon me. Um, don't forget to show the Discord. I mean, do you want to join the Get Dave Discord or the Reclamation Games one? The latter we don't use a ton? I feel like I should fact is, I'm pretty anti-social online. I don't want to talk to anyone. <laughs> this is different. We have a thing we're doing, right? All right, tutorial two. Ranged guards are terrible. Like the melee guys were kind of chumps. We're gonna make them a little bit harder. Uh, but the range guys, like, Reyna has 
a sword. If you do not get close, you're in trouble. <laughs> you love complaining about new Star Trek. It asks me to. Uh, get in there. There we go. I mean, I guess I'll, I'll show the, if I were exploring it. I have like everything memorized. That's not a doable jump. So. All right. This is our first lesson about some core mechanics in the game. All right. Close the distance. Well, we tried. All right, she's having her existential crisis. It doesn't matter. So, our first introduction to... I'll tell you the name. It's called the Regret Device. Reyna secretly has one other thing other than a key card. And now... A sword. She also has this regret device. If you look at all the cutscenes, she has a little necklace on. Oh, that's terrible. And that's gonna do for her is shake up the Metroidvania genre forever. Speeder on shortcut detected? Maybe. Let that guy do his thing. Again, you don't want to take too long when you can get attacked at the cliff top. Oh, it was a race and we lost. One of the things I want to work on here. Yeah. Yeah, that was tricky, right? How do I force the player to suicide in that spot? Yeah. Alan, I respect you for knowing to look behind the barrels. Yeah, also, I mean, the switch is just explicitly disabled under the hood. Because, again, we can't have them flicking the thing. We have to introduce... I like making that guy suffer the long way. I uh, have to introduce the regard device. And we're going to slowly scaffold it. Because, like, first tell them, hey, time can get reversed. Now, time can get reversed. Well, even. Yeah, we have, we have like a fairly clear problem, right? Gotta scan your security card. If you jump down, you can't get out, but we know what the crystals do. Boom. Back to the safe respawn zone, which we know how it works because of that first room. And little subtle touch. We've got the box there. No big deal. Oh yeah, painless platforming option. I'm glad someone checked that. I have a note to put a thing in there because like some people are complaining about the difficulty and it's like, you can have your defense go up every time you die. Just turn it on. Painless platforming, yeah. If it, so this is if you have trouble with platforming stuff. If you're not a platformer, but you like the fighting, then you just don't take damage from them. Normally it's five damage, which is still pretty low. You can also turn on health regeneration, which is probably gonna get uh, a speed boost. I don't actually have to take this guy out. Suffer the long way. I'm actually trying to show you something. Different attacks. They don't necessarily do the same amount of damage to enemies. And that might become a difficulty setting as well, just like a defense piercing property for a weapon. All right. I have tutorials turned off and everyone seems to miss it, so we'll have to rework that as well. But when the enemies are red, and this is what this guy's here to teach you, you cannot stun lock them. So now, whoop. 
he was not flinching from those hits. So you gotta be careful. Yeah, that's not a death either, right? Um, so, I mean, if you want to split hairs, what's happening there is the regret device. Because she didn't get incinerated, right? She didn't burst into cinders. That's what happens. That's the remnant from when it activates and takes her to safety. So, Reyna has that thing kick in right as she's, like, in the point of being about to get hurt by it. And it takes her back. We can even see. Ugh. You can just see what's left of her. And, yeah, anywhere you use the regret device, you're going to see that green trail from wherever she leaves. Um, and maybe if other stuff. It's the KH Revenge value. Uh, it's very similar. I mean, a lot of games have it. Um, I, had, I used to have something more explicitly like the revenge value. Um, and in Kingdom Hearts, like, when the revenge value gets hit... They typically like do a combo and stuff, whereas this is like the stun locking just stops. Whoa. Baited him. I love doing that. Yeah, see now that guy's dead. Yeah, yeah, so some people are commenting, hey, you should have the options appear at the start. And yeah, that's the plan. So, got a couple criticisms. I mean, we got lots of those. There's been no shortage of feedback. Most of it, uh, really, really constructive. I get it. People don't like having to press two buttons to dodge. It seems obvious now. The dodge came after a different ability, which used the same button, but that ability's not in the demo. So, you had to be there. But I digress. Um, yeah, volume settings. Uh, will be in the main menu at the launch and can be set in-game or at, at that level, and it's global. That There's a ticket for that. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, and difficulty settings, yeah, when you start the new game. But you know what? It was three in the morning and I had to get a build up for seven. <laughs> had the epiphany that when I went to bed, um, here's a fun thing. Maybe it'll be a spoiler for later. We'll see if we do it. Um, I wanted to put it up there and uh, a guy helping out uh, with the art. Later, stronger abilities can be a two button combo. Agreed. Uh, he wanted to have it tucked up there. May might put a different secret there. Because this room's not too bad for tucking a secret in, even in late game. But, uh, you can't reach it right now. You'd have to have a power-up from later. Alright, loop completed. Dead bodies persist for the entire game, unless they get incinerated. I actually, I might put this in too. Um, it's pretty morbid, but I thought I experimented with it once and it was a pretty funny dark joke, I thought, where uh, if Rana walks through an area where someone got incinerated by the crystals, she can sometimes she'll like say little blurbs about what's going on around her. Uh, she can notice the smell. Yeah. Is there a water level? Oh, someone's seen the thing. Yes, there is a water level. And... Uh, Towel Man, who was also in that video, can't go through that door. Uh, he gave me a hard time. There is no sewer level. All right. No disintegrations. You know what? I'm fine with it. Oh, you should have shot me while you had the chance, man. Out of my way. I try to make that jump every time. And fail most of the time. Alright. Music's getting a little bit quieter. We're getting deeper.
Yeah, in general, I mean, it's complicated. Like, I also feel like our first area has like this sort of like concrete bunker area, which is like not very visually striking. Um, and I mean, we might revisit it, but it's like for this story, that's the setting I want, right? Like this is a bolt hole. Um, but you know, if you throw in a sewer level as well, it's like, now you're going too far. Maybe I'm tossing shade like outside my weight class and people would be offended, but that's one thing I didn't love about like near Automata is, um, like, you know, a lot of the environments are like this kind of industrial and it's like, you know, have some color and they get better for that later on, but boom. Are there going to be some fun Easter eggs? Okay, so there's a whole list of things for collectibles, and one of them is, like, have all sorts of hidden stuff all around. Is there going to be, like, a Metroid throwback, though, or anything? Um, maybe. I'm reminded of Shadow Complex. Yeah, I have been told... <laughs> So I've never played Shadow Complex, and indeed had until recently never heard of it. And someone was like, uh, when we put out the, hey, it's coming to PS5 trailer, one person was like, they're obviously ripping off Shadow Complex. And it's like, what is this game? You know, and also in term, I, I, like in terms of the style of the setting and um, graphical mode, yeah. But I mean, also, it's just as much Mega Man 11, right? The two and a half D thing. A lot of people have a hard time getting close on these guys. Just, you can jump. Yeah, you gotta dodge. Yeah, Hero of the Wind's actually not a bad achievement title. This is a list of achievements we have planned. One of them would work pretty well with that. Boom. A little platformer puzzle. As if Shadow Complex invented the 2.5D Metro Vine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, having looked into it a bit more now, uh, that'd be like saying control ripped off its setting. You know, it's like, I mean, not really. <laughs> okay, for Easter egg, hear me out. Post game unlockables that are included with GDP. Um, that's a great idea. Actually, GDP is going to be our currency for microtransactions. A lot of testers were suggesting that, um, how do I put this? The artifacts should be purchasable with in game currency. Finally, a use for them. Yeah, you guys are going to be set. Alright, so fun fact. On build day, I put out... Uh, please add time savers as well. That's a great point. <laughs> yeah, like opening a chest, you have to like manually pick it, but you can pay to have it open instantly. Um, there's ways to make money as an indie. Fun fact about this rock. So, it looks pretty rough. I tried cleaning it up, made the build, pushed it, was fixing a major critical bug um, where uh, an important door was getting locked if people played through the game in a different sequence than I do. I still don't really know how they do it, but a lot of people have done it, at least five, um, which is a lot because I thought it was zero. <laughs> but anyway, and I like reshaped this rock and it messed up the collider so Reyna couldn't pull herself up on it. So I immediately put in a different game breaking bug I felt bad about it because it was geometry one just buy Reyna a gun oh man if she had a long range weapon it would change things make her life a lot easier I uh originally had some ranged options for her and took it out um just because I mean I want I mean thematically Reyna moving towards danger is like that's the thing in the game and yeah reinforce it with gameplay that looks like yeah that's gonna be trouble 
So all of these rooms start off uh, as just like boxes, but we want to make them more visually interesting. A lot of them are still very boxy, which again, something that gets worked on, but that's like something you can throw in in a day one patch without. I know people get triggered by that term, but like just rounding out the room geometry is something you can throw in there, even though I just established that I made a game breaking bug by doing that exact thing. Um, My point is just that when we did that, sometimes like the actual colliders right interacts with get rounded up, like that thing that I just said happened. So, but I'm sure we've learned our lesson and it'll be fine. We can get away with it now. All right, so if you walk past this, no big deal, but this is just to introduce you. Okay, those gates, they don't have to be in the same room as their uh, security terminal now. And I don't, not a ton of people to find game down the cavern. Yeah, this is a Metroidvania, man. So, I mean, the, the cavern is, again, also, this is all the tutorial area, right? The cavern is there to show you that, like, in Metroid games, you shouldn't die by falling down a pit. You fall down a pit and get stuck at the bottom of a pit by falling down a pit. Pit. Anyway, okay, not a ton of people have mentioned this, but I think this is cool, and it was, it was difficult. So... Health flask, no big deal. We have lots of those, right? Just remember it. Okay, we don't have a security card for that one. Boop. Go get it. Also, game looking cleaner. Yeah, um, it's gonna keep happening, right? We brought in someone to help with the art, like, two weeks before the demo got started and basically none of his stuff's in there but we want obviously to clean that up all right uh i've had some people say wall jump feels really good one person saying they couldn't get the timing down but that was before i had the more explicit tutorials explaining you can grab the wall first i think it's pretty easy but let me know what you guys think can't jump out of the pit all right figuring out that she has an extra artifact and it's the best one All right, hold it. I had press written down originally and that threw some people for a loop. That was just a typo by me. So we hold it. You can do this on almost any room from now on. Okay, so it says hold now. Yeah, I did it for you, Alan. Hey Dave, really enjoyed the demo. Hey Jeff, welcome. Uh, okay, the chest is closed, but its contents are empty. That's because Rana has taken the contents, which are with her now. Game looking cleaner, didn't hear what you said? Oh, we're, we're still working on cleaning it up. That That's something that's not going to stop. Um, yeah, period. Because, uh, you know, there's some things I'm happier with, but there's just so much work to do. It was tri tricky. Um, right before we did the PS5... Uh, and Xbox Series XS announcement. Um, there was a major change to the Unity render pipeline like a few days before it. And we kind of had to do the update because um, of a different Unity bug where it's like, okay, we have to update. We're going to get the new render pipeline. Um, and all of our graphical settings didn't work anymore. Like everything had to get thrown out. So it got like cobbled together the last second. Yeah, anyway, continuity thing. Anything Reyna has with her stays with her. So it's an imperfect form of time travel, right? Her card is still scanned. That event hasn't happened in this timeline, but the gate's shut. And again, you flick this. Those events go back now. Chest is closed because we re-entered the room trigger. Don't worry about it. Her chest is open, but yeah. If a chest was uh, closed when she went to the beginning of the room, then it's physically closed, but the contents might be with her. And that's going to be a big deal. I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. So we've been seeing those those gates, right? Think about a small key from a Zelda game where it opens one door. Well, if you combine it with the regret device, as long as it's in her possession, she'll have it. You put it in the on a door, unlock it, you know, 
or even think of like a, a power object that you like you put it somewhere to activate a switch or whatever if you reverse time that thing's going to disappear and go back to her person it won't stay there so we have some things that will stay the same with the regret device and some things that will not you could make some interesting puzzles in the next biomes out of that Oh, yeah, yeah. The the wall... I'm, I'm talking more about the... Alan, I'm talking about just the wall grabbing. The ledge grab, yeah, a couple people. I like it, but a couple people have uh, said, like, oh, you need to change this and this, um, which is probably going to happen. One of the things on the to-do list is... Um, there's this whole thing for... Um, just working on the momentum... And so the ledge grab is going to tie into that as well. Just so Rosanna, Rana preserves her momentum a little bit more. Um, it'll be more obvious in a little bit why that's a super big deal. Are you going to have a Chrono Trigger type mechanic where you can get a good item now or a great item with time travel? Um, no, I'm not going to do the Chrono Trigger thing. I think with our version of time travel also, it wouldn't technically make sense. All right, meet the Inquisitor. Who is an independently minded man. And confident. When Mrs. Get Dave read the script <laughs> and like the argument Raina has with the Inquisitor, she was just like, This is what talking or arguing with you is like. So if you want to know who I'd be from the story. Just beat that phantom into submission with his words. All right, let's dance. People are very split on the difficulty of the phantom on the left. Rifle guards we know. These enemies are positioned... Oh, back up. 100% to be as easy as possible. Ugh, got me. Let me play the game for a sec. As easy as possible for the player because, of course, if the rifle guard were behind, like, they are so dangerous at range. Uh, I got the grumpy Raina face. I had the phantom. Yeah! But then, like, uh, Quasi was like, oh, yeah. It was basically free. Uh, the big thing is, like, if you're... And I want to reinforce this a bit more with the gameplay and everything, but that red flashing mechanic. Like, when someone's flashing red, don't. Don't. Just back off. Because the game... It's, like, in a similar... It's, like, Hollow Knight adjacent, where... Um, like in Hollow Knight you sort of need this like zen like calm where you sort of wait at medium range and take attacks as they come this is a bit different you want to wait at usually medium range again but you got to get in get your damage and get out because again Reyna can't she's physically weaker than everyone she can't hang with all these guys in a slugging match but you poke around a bit All right. And he has a really helpful artifact. Come on. 
All right, gotta get you in sight. All right, so a thing I haven't shown yet, and I probably should, is... Is the Kopesh a Snapwave reference? No, but I'm glad you know it's a Kopesh. <laughs> it's a pretty good weapon. It, um, it's a good counter to a longsword. Reyna is using a Spanish heavy rapier. Specifically, she's actually using the sword Colada, which belonged to El Cid. I did this with the respawn animation. Uh, Alan, put those put those thoughts in the Discord in the mistakes uh, section. Best counter to swords would be a spear. Oh, we're not having we're not having that discussion. Not if you have shields in the mix, man. All right. Oh yeah, he's going on it. Which is why people use... Spears are cheaper. That's why they all use them. They have advantages, but they're cheap. All right. Uh, I want to know... Okay, should I throw it so we can show the alternate cutscene? Because, of course, if time were to go back, Reyna would know what happens. Eh, let's just beat him down. Most people who have done the demo know about it. But yeah, Reyna is seeing uh, as having this conversation normally. If she were to lose, she'd travel back in time to the fountain. Go for the punish! Boom. Yeah, toss it in there, Al. Still interested in the necklace to the end. Yeah. Hmm. Why is there? Why is he talking about a second thing? Inquisitor knows a lot more than he lets on. Knows a lot about what's going on, and now he's dying. Time to pillage the dead. All right. Is there gonna be a nightmare mode? Um, so yeah, I would like to do... There's gonna be lots of modes. That's what I'll say about that. All right, there's the instructions that you can dash in any direction you want. I may adjust the timing. Ah! So, I mean, technically this is correct in terms of continuity because that elevator was down when we last went through this room. It does bug me though. Yeah. I mean, so the catch is why Reyna 
Like, if people are dying a lot, I can see how the recovery or the respawn animation would be annoying. Because, yeah, she's like, catches her breath there and, like, puts her head down. But, I mean, she was also just beaten to death, basically. And, because what happens is the regret device auto magically kicks in. And so, in this situation, it'll kick in, take her to the last point of safety before she's in trouble. Well, if she's getting beaten up, she has this recurring thing she does while she's here at all of these spots, which is a uh, drink from water that heals her. So it's gonna move her back to that healing point. Oh man, I did not 100% my own demo. I think we're gonna be short, whoa, we're gonna be short one. Take it up. Anyway, so for story reasons, I really do like the uh, respawn animation. And she's, yeah, she freaks out for a little bit there. It's out of breath. Oh, I could see it was off and I jumped anyway. All right, there we go. It's interesting, a little side effect is those for five second ones, you have to sit through them over and over. That's true. Yeah, you know what, adding a button to cut it short, that's fair. You can add that. All right, yeah, we missed one. I wonder which room it's in. Because this is the last power-up, because we're one room away from the end of the demo here. One of the highest priorities is to make these guys tougher, so uh, enjoy them while you can. We might give them a resist mode. Oh, you can see sometimes they get pretty evasive. I kept like, I also, I was just like trying to wail on him. And uh, yeah, that, that doesn't work as well. Again, you gotta jump in. Friend who dies of disease, does she relive the thing? Oh yeah, the upper platform way back. That's true. This is uh, this room. Yeah which is actually named Forky Fork under the hood. Uh, Forky Fork is where the power up is. That's actually one of the easiest ones to find and we went through the room. It's kind of funny. Yeah, the next thing that happens, you do choose. Because I thought it would be interest more like dorky dork. Them's fighting words. Yeah, I I thought um, a Metroidvania. Because okay, if you take like Metroid Samus Returns, it's tight, um, but almost to the point that I think it became linear again. Which color is the best ending? Uh, I would say the blue one. Wait, the red one? I don't know, the one where you kill the reapers. Yeah, messages in the fountain. Uh, boy, maybe there's meaning being conveyed. Anyway, yeah, demo ends. Anyway, uh, I wanted to swear it really does branch and like, Depending on which one you take, of course, it'll determine what power-ups you have when you go through it all, and uh, whether certain things are locked doors or not when you go past them. Anyway. That's the demo. Mrs. Get Dave also got in here. <laughs> you saw the demo's over. See, what I wanted to do was have you fight the Inquisitor the first time. Uh, like live on yeah. the camera. And then I would take over the second time. <laughs> the inevitable second That's time. That's not very nice. Is it true? <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I was getting better, right? 
Uh, all right, this is a direct result of Other M. How do you feel about Metroid Dread? Um, okay, we'll see, is the main answer. I do have, so it's the same studio, so I'm worried that they make it a little too tight and a little too linear. And even you think about something like the melee counter, which they iterated on. They still kept it and then they made it into offensive as well, which might be enough to save it. But like, they really like the melee counter so much that again, like a lot of fights, you could shoot an enemy like 20 times or you could melee counter them once and then shoot them once. Um, so it's like, okay, it gives you like this massive power boost so much so that you have to use it. And then the line the game is like laid out that way. You get the various suit, take half damage, but now all enemies automatically do double damage. Um, so it's like, it's so rigid that it becomes a linear game again. I'm hoping they don't do that. We'll see. Um, no way to know until we play it. Um, they did take, um, basically they took our release window because, you know, it's not like you can release the day before a Metroid game drops. So I didn't love that, but I'm excited to play it. 19 years without a mainline game and they punked our release window. <laughs> anyway. Um, I really like that it was evident that it's one of your subs that asked if this is a no pants demo. <laughs> this is a no pants demo. It's summertime and it's there's a, a shorts, heat wave. It's a shorts demo. It's shorts demo, but that qualifies as no pants. Uh, yeah, we will be selling. Oh, thanks for the music compliments. Uh, we will be selling the soundtrack either by itself or in a bundle, right? Yeah, um, there's Wait, even really a thing for decided. it. Yeah, so th there's a thing for it in Steam, right? Like, because under the hood in Steam, it's like you create like, uh, they're called apps because like you can sell, you know, a program through Steam. People don't really do it, um, but you can sell like RPG Maker through Steam. Uh, each one of those gets an app. So it's like there's an app for the demo. There's an app for the main game. There's an app for the soundtrack. There's an app for like the, the tester version. So I mean, like, uh, you know, the yes. I think I have to figure out how to put stuff there, <laughs> but uh, again, that can wait till after we submit for certification. I think also we floated around the idea of at some point maybe even having some sheet music for the hardcore people. Yeah, I I'm that person where I'm like, oh, I really love that soundtrack. How can I find the sheet music? So yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> got the Celeste sheet music. You did the right thing, Darcy. <laughs> Where the kilt anyway? Kilts are cool. Well, that part's less true. Um, my partner might want to play it on the piano if I gave her the sheet music, which is kind of funny because that's how Dave got me into stuff in the first place. He started indoctrinating me with like video game sheet music yeah. a really long time ago. Video game sheet music yeah. and Avatar The Last Airbender. And I <laughs> flipped you and Dragon Quest. Uh-huh. Because you were like anti-TV. You're like, wow. I wasn't anti-TV. You were like, why would I watch a TV show? It's like, let me tell you about Avatar true. The Last Airbender. Before it was true. cool, by the way. Yeah. Anyways, yep. you, you get in through the sheet music for someone like me, and then all of a sudden you're like, okay, I want to know what happened during the music, and then you're playing the game. Yep. So that's I'm, the end of that. I'm a gate. I'm a. I'm a game dealer, and my <laughs> gateway drug is music. Dragon Quest is a good trick up the sleeve. Yes. yes. Yep. Because mm -hmm. you thought games were just shooting. Uh no, I played enough like Super Mario. Oh, stuff that's true. To know. That's true. Like, unforgiving Super Mario. Am I going to get uh, old YouTube friends to stream the game? Uh, just the old YouTube enemies. Uh, so I'm going <laughs> to go and through my... And frenemies. Yeah, enemies and frenemies. So why caliber? <laughs> it's on both lists. <laughs> this is a demo of the demo? Yeah, I'm demonstrating the demo. <laughs> um, yeah, no, uh, I'll go through the list of everybody I've ever banned from the channel. Uh, and and we'll, invite them all back. And just like, here's a free copy of the game. And <laughs> Tell her what you, you think. You could be like, you've probably had a really amazing past 16 months, and you're probably an even happier person now. 16? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> if you can think of anything that's happened in 16 months. Yeah, you had internet rage. Let's see what COVID did for that. <laughs> and an electoral cycle in the States. Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, man. That'd be a great That'd time to go fun. touch base with people. I remember some of the names. <laughs> so if I want to get a free copy of the game, I just have to get banned. 
<laughs> but how would you do that? Hmm. No. Um. Yeah, I would go through people. Um. And, you know, tell your wife, tell your kids, tell everybody. But th that will wait more towards uh, actual release. Wishlist it on Steam. Yeah. Wishlist <laughs> the game on Steam and tell your friends to wishlist it. Yeah, even if they hate it. I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to be principled about this. Yeah. Tell the world. Um, demo is going to be getting updates for a little bit. Because um, I want to uh, keep cleaning stuff up, basically. Free copy, please. Mm. You got scratch my back too, CB. <laughs> <laughs> I remember asking quite some time ago on a YouTube stream if Mrs. Get Dave knows how much of a nerdy dork her husband is. <laughs> He's affecting her. <laughs> uh, do, uh, you would say I was a an nerdy easy... nerdy dork? You would say I was an easy... You're the one though. starting an argument on uh, <laughs> on the be the pros versus cons of swords versus spears. I'm Ooh. a game enthusiast. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> well... I feel like the interest in people are dorky about what they want, what they're interested in. Well, people who are not very interesting aren't very passionate about stuff. Yeah, so, I, I just watch Netflix. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. You can get someone who's really dorky about crafting too, but yep. they're passionate about it and they're interesting to hear. Yeah. So <laughs> the weapon triangle dictates it. Yeah, I mean, what if the game doesn't have the weapon triangle though? Was that Three Houses that did away with it? I think Three Houses uh, had no weapon triangle. It was one of the recent ones. Oh. Uh, yeah, actually, I think. Yeah. What a bummer. I've only played two Fire Emblem. Yeah, you've played Awakening. Those are a good two, if you're going to pick two. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Awakening had it, though. Oh, yeah. Shadows of Valentia. Yeah, that got rid of it, too. Man. Or actually, I guess you'd be more correct to say it hadn't been invented yet. Um, Does he constantly complain about new Star Trek? <laughs> like, like the blow em up, shoot em up Star Trek? The, the kill everyone. I, I, the I the internet we, Star Trek. I would say we would both complain about it, honestly. And, like, and just, how disappointing. Here's or the thing. are we talking about Picard? Yeah. Both? Yeah. Blue, blow em up, shoot em up, and Picard? Yeah. They're different. They're, they're the same. How disappointing. Yeah. But Lower Decks. Lower Decks is good. <laughs> um, I, I. Here's the thing. You guys bring it up a lot on the Discord, right? If it comes up, the the old rage burns within me anew. The, what did they What did they bring up? Oh, Star Trek. Oh, yeah. so they'll be like, "Oh man, Dave's always hitting on Star Trek." It's like, from my point of view, you guys bring it up and just like, <laughs> I'm just a pile of Star Trek gasoline, okay? <laughs> Y'all are throwing the match. When we're feeling sad, we just swap watch the optimism of Picard old. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Go watch Next Generation. Yeah. Talking about how... I mean, the tally thing is just because Mass Effect came out recently. Hey, thanks for that. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, thanks for cheering for us. Living the dream is lots of parts <laughs> of craziness, lots of parts of we're doing this and lots of parts of how do we do this? So on Monday morning, I started working. I did the math. Oh no. The Monday morning I started working this week. Tuesday worked. By the time I went to bed that day, I had worked 41 hours. Just on Monday and Tuesday? Well, Tuesday went into Wednesday. Oh yeah, well, they all yeah. kind of blur when you stay up till 2 or 3 a.m. trying to get things done. <laughs> yep. Was, yeah. And then up at seven on Wednesday. Yep, that's the math. I've never seen a Star Trek, so I'm innocent. You know, Alan, at this point, I, I it would be like you hadn't participated in a coin flip. So <laughs> take that however you will. Is it worth flipping it to see if you win? I don't know. You're 500 um, right now. If you need to, you can always use the rule of 8.0. Yeah, tv.com, really only watch episodes that have a rating of 8.0 or higher. Or if it's Star Trek Voyager, go with 8.2. And then it'll just be a wonderful show and you won't know what anybody's talking about. Yeah. Yeah, like when watching a Red Letter Media video and they reference some horrible thing, it's like, I didn't know that happened. And that's a good thing. Any more upcoming interview stuff like PlayStation? Yeah, like uh, the blog? Yeah. Um, we could, Maybe. 
do another one closer to release. It was that took of, a long time. It was, but I felt like it was kind of fun to share with people. Yeah. Like, like behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that was fun. It I was know, fun I know having this. Enjoyed reading it. It was fun having the scrutiny of the internet. Oh my goodness. Uh, the no. number we got so much shade from PS5 people who were like, I can't even get a PS5, and it's like. I don't control that! <laughs> and we weren't talking about it. <laughs> um, what would be the age rating for the game? Uh, I've okay. seen that asked a couple times. Age rating. Okay, so there's multiple answers to it depending on where you live. How it works is you fill out a survey about stuff that's in your game. Um, it's And different countries have different definitions of what's um, tolerable and what's not. In Europe, this is a 16 plus game. We're basically the equivalent of T for Teen in Europe. Um, because if you noticed in like the second cutscene in the game, a guard beats Reyna while she's unarmed. He hits her. And so like the Brazilian rating agency, when they're like, okay, so you have an armed man show violence towards a woman in the first five minutes of the game. It's like, well, yeah, but I mean, that makes it sound like one thing. <laughs> they're like, all right, Oy. 16 plus. Uh, whereas in America, they do not care. It's like, <laughs> yeah. So in, in Europe, we qualified for like the extreme violence, and in America, we didn't meet the minimum violence. They're just like, okay, that's fantasy okay, violence. What about maybe more? It's more helpful if, like, if you had a kid, what age would you yeah. say that they should play it? I'm, I'm giving okay. the long answer. Okay. Some countries don't have any standard at all. They just ask you. So for them, I said 12 plus. Um. Yeah, so that would that was my saying uh, or my my cutoff, because um, also it's like you got to think about like the good stuff that you would appreciate. I'm also of the feeling like would a nine year old like Hollow Knight? It's like maybe, probably like a kid I, into that I mean, genre would like Hollow Knight. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, skills. Skills might be there too, right? I guess. But if you're playing Hollow Knight, you know hearing the Pale King talk about, like, no voice to cry suffering. Hmm. Like, <laughs> what life experience do you have that's, to prepare that's, you that's, for the, like... That's when they button mash. They're just like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Pale King, mash. don't care. Where's the next fight? Uh, yeah. Yeah. What about an Android iOS port? 100% uh, no on that. Um, maybe, like... Not, I would... Something like Apple Arcade, maybe it's like the the platforms or consoles or the main consoles and computer right now. That's the target. Um, a lot of people there when we announced a PS5. Demand for it too, right? Yeah, and just when you go on mobile, that's a whole can of worms. Right. But... When you announce PS5. Oh yeah, when I announced PS5, a lot of people were like, "Oh, couldn't this game be on the PS4?" And it's like, it could be on the PS3. Um, probably not the two, because a lot of people are underestimate like. 4K resolution is very high. <laughs> um, the game runs in 4K. Uh, but anyway, it could run on lower consoles. The power isn't the issue. It's um, basically the difficulties of getting a PS5 are not compared to a PS4 uh, without saying anything specific that would violate my NDA with Sony. <laughs> those are not necessarily the same inconveniences in acquiring dev kits and we could get one <laughs> there was budget for one mm -hmm. um i dave is just a single developer can't expect the world from him i just wanted to say i want oh, i forget when it was i like overheard you describing yourself I forget who you're talking to, and you're like, we're we're indie. We're actually very indie. <laughs> yeah, we're and, so indie. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was funny. Yeah, <laughs> we're a tiny team. That's okay. Yeah, we're we're a tiny team. Sometimes the we is a me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At least not until you get Stardew Valley numbers. Um. Yeah, as far as I know, Stardew Valley, like, my impression of uh, what happened to the dev on that is that he did not grow his team. He uh, just um, contacted his developer and once it was financially lucrative um, and just asked them to do the stuff he didn't want to do. 
Uh, so I don't know if he's directly managing the team or anything like that, or if it's really just like he delegated, because I know he didn't want to do multiplayer. 4X game for next game, right? Okay. Uh, Tri- triple A 4X. Triple A 4X <laughs> game? You're never going to get the triple A. The goal is triple I, um, which is like, even that's maybe a stretch. That's like just the the like indie game. AD. Yeah, like the indie game that's like a little bit better. But then it's like confusing, like, do you cl- classify a super giant as a triple I developer? It's like, they took game of the year over God of War, like, mm. or over The Last of Us 2 from most outlets. So it's like, I mean, they're just rocky at that point. Just make Master of Orion 2 like every 4X dev has been doing for 20 years. <laughs> I'll say this, I did have an epiphany about Master of Orion 2, which I will not share. But in my opinion, if you've watched the streams, oh, and I was thinking about I might do an LP of it again sometime soon. Of Master of Orion? Yeah, well, I thought of something I'd never done before. Don't you have, a, like, th- two or three? First off, I have about 100 less than the people... Like, the 4X people are never sated. Like, they always yes. want more. It's like... Especially depending on what country you're from. Yeah. They'll just be like, well, why don't you try the exact same thing but left-handed? It's like, maybe, maybe that'll be harder. It's like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I thought I could do a, a score run on it. Let's try getting as many points as possible. So you'd, you'd really dodge the question of how many Master of Orion. Oh, okay. Oh, I had an epiphany about it though. Cause okay, in a lot of the Let's Plays, I've sort of said like, yeah, the micromanagement and the way it scales is kind of the problem. And that's killed all the future mm-hmm. 4X games. Cause people look at Orion 2 as the gold standard And they miss out things that were criticisms at the time, which then became standard in the genre because the rest of the game's so good. Um, I kind of, I had one solution um, to dealing with it. I was flirting around with that idea in the back of my mind. And I've had that like documented and been building on that for a few years. And I had an epiphany just the other day. And that's all I'm going to say about it because that Mm. could be cash moolah I'm sitting on. And I feel like... There is like, Add that to your diary. <laughs> yeah. But like in the Star Drive and um, what's the other one? In the Space Heyday, that was a few years ago, there was like this swell of 4X games. And it's kind of... And the Space 2 killed it all. <laughs> Shots fired. Uh, there's like a, a void again. Mm-hmm. But yeah, there was a brief time where everyone took a kick at the can around where Conquer the Stars came out as well. Master of Ryan 4, I guess. Yeah. But uh, anyway, there is, so there is um, three leading candidates for what the next game would be. Um, And the other one is also uh, Reclamation Games. We also have to have the asterisk. Reclamation Games declares bankruptcy and I become homeless is also (laughs) outcome four. Tell your friends. Tell your friends to wishlist the game. (laughs) Wait. Yeah. Oh, does that get too real? How do you think I feel? (laughs) <laughs> this is good dave gave me like the stare of horror and then laughed at me what happened to Dominus? what happened to that dominus Galact- galactica galaxia again i know i know about the name um uh oh sorry can i say something uh one sec uh he's I think he kind of got burned out and then took an industry job. Um, he did a bunch of work on it and then uh, I think kind of recently has kind of had the wind go from his sails a little bit. Uh, his name is Jeff Graw. Um, his just, name was Jeff Graw. I was just going to say someone brought up Patreon and yeah, we're very thankful for people who have continued to support us on Patreon. <laughs> yeah, also if you Big did... Big shout out. <laughs> if you're still on Patreon, I put a post there. You should reply to it just talking about thank you stuff Mm -hmm. um again uh if reclamation games isn't making any more games then you're gonna get like a uh assigned uh post-it note (laughs) that'll be the thank you possibly a a picture of one a really good coupon for fast food in your area yeah it'll be you'll see a (laughs) post-it note soaked with my tears that says thank you anyway (laughs) um yeah otherwise we like thanking people, though, so we're hoping we can do something nice. Yeah. Anyway. What are, uh, what are your plans after release? Okay. Are you going to take a wait and see how the game does? 
Oh, I don't think I. I mean, it would have to be we're about to lose the house uh, to curl back to the old job, just because. It would be a new job at this point. Yeah, it would probably be a new job, and I just uh, I don't like being told what to do. In a soul sucking environment. <laughs> Well, it's not, yeah. Don't get into that. But yeah. um, it's just well, it's, it's a whole, good it's, job for many people. It's but the if, whole corporate like the game every day the same dream every day the same dream. If you're familiar with that game, yeah, it's a bit of that. Which is also a uh, that's like a labor rights game, I guess. A lot of people are oh. like, it's about suicide. It's like no, it's about suicide rather than giving into the man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dave is a strong, independent woman. Don't you ever forget. <laughs> I'm on a boat. Oh, um. But yeah, how is it for after the game's out? Like, what's the plan? It, um, yeah, the plan would be support the game for a while. Um, because it won't have all the features right out of release and it won't be all on all the platforms, right? As I was mentioning before, it's like, we would like to get it on PS4. There's no reason it can't be on PS4. Mm -hmm. Um, Aside from the fact, and we even have a dev license for it, but we don't have a dev kit. Uh, thoughts on NHL playoffs? Uh, come on, ref! Those are my thoughts. <laughs> Vegas, series? zero penalties last night. Uh, yeah, those are my thoughts. Uh, bummer about the Oilers, optimistic about their future. Uh, hilarious what happened to the Leafs. Um... I won't say what else I want to say on stream. Go Leafs fans. Toronto's got a lot of fans. Wishlist Reina and Jericho on Steam. <laughs> I will wear a Leaf sweater <laughs> if we get Leafs Nation behind us. Uh, that would... Wow. Wow. Um, but yeah. Uh, I was excited to see the Habs win. I do think I'm kind of cheering for them. Because um, I, I hate Vegas. I feel because bad. They, because they just got to steal everyone's players and not they, have like a cycle of... They didn't have to go through the, the tough times to get to the good had, times. And it's yeah. Vegas on top of it. So they're just like, yeah, the party never ends. And it's like, you don't deserve a party. <laughs> I respect your willingness to go full out to game to make money. Oh, I could go... Did you not hear our DLC ideas? Paying to make the chests open faster? Are you what? kidding me? There's way more we could be selling out on. <laughs> Vegas equals expansion to Steam? Yeah. Avalanche played so good too? Yeah. Refs were gunning for him. Felt bad for Nathan McKinnon. And poor, poor little Gerard. Got beat up out there. Mm. <laughs> the refs did not care. DLC with Dave's voice narration. That'd be more of like a 4X thing. I could do the what Michael Dorn did for... Uh, I think we're pretty much at the same level as a voice actor. Um, <laughs> I could do what he did for uh, Conquer the Stars. He like voice acted his own game? No. Oh. Michael Dorn is Worf. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes. Uh, they just hired him to be the narrator for the game. So when you get a tech... That's cool. Like the Goss Cannon. Oh, is that like when you play Civ and... Yeah, that... Letter Nimoy yes. chimes in. because I'm always like, oh yes, I'd like to hear what you're saying. Yeah. Wait, Worf voice acted in Conquer the Stars? Yeah, Master of Ryan 4, man. Brought to you by Worf and Wash from Firefly. Mm -hmm. uh, steer clear of his stuff. He did what he could, but... Uh... Well, enough about that. <laughs> feels like more like selling out than portraying your sports team. Then you know the restraint I am showing, Alan. Steam says this game is similar to Portal and Portal 2. Uh, it also says that's that based on your recommendation, or that's based on your library. And it, is it also says in there. that Steam is still learning about us. If yeah. You, if you like look at the fine prints and like, how do we help you learn about us more? Um, I. You know what? So okay, if we ignore the camera difference that a 3d game is fundamentally very different from a 2d if you had metroid prime with a portal gun or sorry if you had compared portal to metroid prime and gave reina's regret device to samus i think the way the puzzles work would actually i think there's something there one's manipulating space in a non-linear way but Uh, 
we'll see. <laughs> Guys are talking like the 4X game like it's done. It's like, I need to clarify. <laughs> that may not be the next one, and there might not be a next one. We'll see. Yeah, again, you might just drive past me uh, on a highway ramp, and... <laughs> <laughs> You'll see a haggard man holding a sign, <laughs> wearing no pants. <laughs> Let's donate. Uh... Thinking a DRPG, I would love to do an RPG. Also on the to-do list, but I mean, that's, yeah, I mean, they're all big projects, right? I'd like to do something smaller. Anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it a uh, call it a stream. Thanks for coming out, everybody. Yeah, thanks Special thanks to Stream or to Steam for uh, being glitched the entire time and not working. Really? Yeah. Oh no. It was scheduled. I did a test stream right before it didn't work. Oh no. Or the test stream worked, and then like I did it for a scheduled thing, and then like other devs were having problems. So, uh, oof. anyway, uh, yeah. Thanks for coming out, everybody. I'll be putting this on the YouTube and. Uh, well, just take care of yourselves. <laughs> We're gonna get content ID'd for your title screen music. I just know it. <laughs>